Hi everybody, welcome back. My name's Claire. I've got a really, really exciting pour to do now. I've been following a wonderful, wonderful artist called Chris Schneider. Um, she does these absolutely fantastic landscapes. They're so realistic, they're so beautiful, all with fluid art, with flip cups and swipes. They're amazing. I'm going to put her link in the description of this video so you can check out her channel. So I've been following her for a while um, and then we've, we've been messaging and we've decided to set each other a challenge. So her paintings are very classy, very realistic. So my challenge is to do something similar. I want to do a landscape um, which is, um, it represents the Yorkshire Dales where I often go running, where my husband's family's from, Yorkshire. Um, so I want to do sky, I want to do um, the Yorkshire Dales, so green, and I want to do some flowers at the bottom. The challenge I've set her is to use a whole rainbow of colours. So not um, not her nice, normal, classy, sophisticated colours, but full on bright colours. Um, so, so excited to get started with this. So I've mixed my colours. Let me show you. I think you'll notice straight away that this isn't my normal mix of colours. Um, there's no pink, there's a little bit of purple. I do have a hint of purple here, which I'll explain in a second. But no turquoise, no pink, not my normal colours. So this is really exciting. So for the grassy area, I've got these four colours. So Pebio Studio Acrylics Earth Green, which is actually this one, but I've put mixed in some white. Um, a Pebio Iridescent um, Chrome Green Hue. Amsterdam bronze and Amsterdam, is it sap green? Yeah, sap green. So I've got those mixed there. For the sky area, three Amsterdam colours, King's blue. This one is sky blue light and white. And then De La Rowney Wedgwood. For the flowers, I'm going to do a little swipe at the bottom. I'm going to use, I introduce a little bit of yellow. So Amsterdam Naples yellow, deep. And then this one is De La Rowney Velvet Purple. Um, the, I run out of the pop term split, so um, that's what's left. So that's mixed in there. So new recipe for this experiment, this challenge. I've made my pouring medium, PVA glue and water pouring medium, as usual. So two parts PVA glue to one part water. But then I've mixed two parts pouring medium to one part paint. So they're much, much runnier than when I would do a flip cup normally much runnier i want them to be quite fluid because i want them to blend so with julie's flip cups um sorry chris's flip cups she um they the colors just blend together beautifully so you can get a rough idea of the consistency i'll put the recipe in the description and another big difference with these these flip cups is there's no silicone for this pour, I'm going to layer up three little tiny cups. I'm using a 30 centimetre square canvas. Two cups are going to be the sky. One cup is going to be the grass, the dales, the hills. Then the last section of the canvas is going to be the swipe. Let me, in fact, let me try and explain it a little bit better. So top, so roughly the top half will be blue sky. Then we'll have some like Yorkshire dales, some green. And then what Chris does is layers, lays some paint on the bottom and then swipes downward, downwards. And that's going to be like the meadow. So she will, comes back and embellishes the bottom bit afterwards. So to really accept and take on this challenge, I'm going to try and do something as similar as possible in technique to what she does. So first of all, two little cups layered up with blue. I'd like it to be quite pale, the sky. So, and there's some quite dark, some quite obvious colours here. So I'm going to put, I think, put more white in than the other colours. Um, I'm going to sort of dirty pour it. I'm not really, I'm not really going to get layers because it's too fluid. And the other thing to mention, what she often does is has a slightly darker cup and a slightly lighter cup. So that's worth bearing in mind, actually. Let's make, let's make this the lighter one. So let's put a little bit of white in between each layer. And this one, not so much white. So there'll be some differences. got 
my two sky cups and then my one grass cup this is the darker one this is the lighter with the white so i'm going to put the lighter one at the top then the slightly darker one then the earth and the green so let's do a little flip it's quite full so there's a chance i'm going to just spill this everywhere done right and the best bit about watching chris's videos is she gives all her little cups a little tap she says good luck guys <laughs> so good luck everyone <laughs> right so i'm just going to flip it over and drag it down Right, let's start tilting this. The colours are fab, absolutely gorgeous. Got quite a lot of paint on here, so I want to get rid of quite a bit of this paint. Um, some very interesting cells popping up there. not too happy with that blue that it's that wedgewood color right so i've just layered up just the three colors let's kind of try and go with the flow oh is that a lump that's not good Right, I'm quite happy with that. I've got some amazing cells popping up here. I'm really happy with it. The um, the grey, the Wedgwood has totally swallowed up all my other colours. So it, when I do this again, if I do this again, which I, ex I expect I will, um, I'm going to leave out the Wedgwood. If it stays exactly like it is now, I'll be happy. But I might hand paint a little bit of extra white because it, it, it's just looking quite quite stormy quite cloudy so I just dab the corners there's just a little bit that's got mist right and then the last bit to do is to fill this bit at the bottom um, with a swipe so um, I'm gonna put some very dark right along the bottom And I want to just introduce a little bit of the, the spring, the spring sort of meadow colours. Bit of that yellow. And then this is the bit that will um, get embellished afterwards. So to swipe this bit, I've got a little piece of plastic. I'm just going to swipe downwards.
this is looking so so pretty um it's very moody it looks like it's about to absolutely chuck it down pour with rain very very gray sky but look at these amazing clouds um, I really hope that the sky stays like this and that it doesn't swallow up any more of the colours. I'm hopeful that now it's, it's been 10 minutes or so. I'm hopeful that this is this is it. And these greens are gorgeous. That um, olivey looking green, the earth green, really happy. And then the bottom looks really odd at the moment. But hopefully when I embellish it afterwards, all will become clear. Um, to what I intend to do with it. Um, I'm definitely tempted to do this again, but without the um, the uh, Wedgwood colour. Um, but so far, so good. I'm really pleased. I'll be back when it's dry. So it's now dry and I am so, so happy with it. It just looks so um, real, realistic to me. Obviously, most of my art isn't realistic. It's totally abstract. So this is just a little glimpse of reality. Uh, it definitely looks like some rolling hills and a very moody, stormy sky. Um, those beautiful cells really held. Um, and there's a few few up there as well. This colour has obviously totally dominated this Wedgwood colour. So that's a lesson learned. I need to use less of that or none of that next time. A um, couple of things, a bit of the bronze has broken through here. Um, so if that broke through in the, in, the gra in the grassy area, that would be fine. But obviously you can't have that in the sky. So I'm just going to touch that up. I'm just going to define the horizon a little bit more. So I've got a darker green line there for a bit more contrast. Um, this bottom section here, um, this is where I'm going to put the grass and the flowers. So I'm going to build that up next with um, some sticks. I'm going to put some sticks in some paint and, and dot that on. Um, so, yeah, I'm so happy with how this part has gone. The edges just look fab. Love the way the colour just rolls over the edges. Um, so I'm going to start now with the embellishing. Right, finished my grass and my flowers and I'm so happy, so love this. Um, it's so far, far removed from what I would normally do, so different. I have a lot to learn, but um, I'm actually really happy with this with this attempt at making it look like some flowers and some grass. Um, I added just a little bit in there and a tiny bit in there and tried to get paler as I went further back to give the idea of the, the depth. Um, so... You might think it's finished, <laughs> uh, but have you spotted this? So I'm going to show you, I'm going to put up next um, a paint, a, sorry, a photograph um, that I took out while I was running on the Yorkshire Dales. Now this photograph is what's really inspiring this photo, this painting. And there's a rainbow and obviously I'm rainbow acrylics, love rainbows. So it just seems right to add a rainbow, but I wanted to show you this first. It's still wet, so it's still shiny there. I wanted to show you this first because there's a chance I'm gonna ruin it with my rainbow. So I wanted to show you what it looks like without, and then hopefully I don't ruin it, but I want to, I just, I just want to add a rainbow, why not? fun and how different is this you would never know this was my painting if you'd looked at all my previous work and then suddenly saw this you would not guess maybe apart from the rainbow you just wouldn't guess 
Um, so let me show you all the details. The sky is beautiful. I'm glad I added a few extra white lines in it. Um, I ended up um, putting a little bit of highlight on the clouds. Not sure if that was a good thing to do or not, um, but, but I did it. Um, the green, the depth of colour and contrast in these greens is gorgeous. Really classy colours, really, uh, just really realistic colours. Um, and then the flowers, such an interesting technique to use the edge of a stick um, to create the grasses. Um, and then the flowers, really pretty with the purple. And then let's talk about the rainbow. You can see it's transparent because especially there, you can see the green underneath it, the lines and up here. So I ended up using Dutch pour consistency paint, which was runny enough, so I didn't actually need to add any extra water, but it was quite thin. So I've managed to get the definite colors, but without them being too bright and taking over too much. Um, my daughter said she thought the rainbow was too thin and that, and so it didn't really work. But actually, if you really do look at a rainbow, like the photograph that I took, um, it is very, very thin. I think in, in sort of modern the modern world we do we create this animation of a rainbow which is very thick very chunky rainbow but in reality it's not like that and my aim here was to try and get this as realistic as possible um, I continued the rainbow over the edge that's just the push pin still in the back there so all the way along this canvas you can see that the color just it just glides effortlessly over the edges um, so I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this challenge. Um, I'm going to include a picture here of Chris's painting. And that was the challenge that I set her to use a rainbow. So she normally does this sort of pour, lovely landscapes. I challenged her to use a rainbow, so totally different. And that's what she came up with. So I'm going to put the link to that video in the description of this video. So check it out. Check out her channel. Check out her other work because she's an amazing artist. Great. Thank you so much for watching. Please do hit the thumbs up button. If you like it, please do subscribe to my channel. Great. Take care, everyone. Bye.